Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. Today, it's part of our Fun With Fire series and you can't play with fire in a lab and not you know, do some melting glass. And glass is just fun to play with. We've got a whole bunch of glass tubing. This is a piece of thin wall quarter inch glass tubing and I'm just gonna play with it here and we're gonna have fun with glass. This is kinda neat. Because a lot of people have never really gotten to get a good look at how this works. You see the glass blower guys do it and I've just got a little burns o -matic pocket torch. I actually use this for de-icing locks in the wintertime. I carry it in my backpack. And Mike, for safety, I'm going to want a set of safety glasses because I'm, yes. I'm heating glass here. And yeah. Hey, look at that. There's your high quality stage assistance. You might want to change the oil on those. I have long eyelashes. You know I'm going to get like 20 emails now about my sexy long eyelashes. Okay. That's just what I want. <laughs> Write in with your thoughts about my eyelashes. Because <laughs> really, we want to know. I, eh. Here, Mike, you want a gratuitous eyelash shot? There you go. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to play with fire now. See, not everything we do here has an actual purpose. We do a lot of videos of like, today we're going to talk about diodes, and they're very deep and instructive and meaningful, but some of our stuff is just, hey, let's have fun and play with this, because science is fun. And we come up with a lot of our best ideas when we're just screwing around having fun. Now when you're heating up glass tubing, you want to start out a little bit. You don't want to get right in there. Um, if you look at the flame, the little blue cone on the end is the hottest part of my flame. And you don't want to go right there. The glass will frequently break. Now with this, we're using a piece of uh, borosilicate glass tubing, which is commonly referred to as Pyrex or Kymax, our common brand names. So it's really good with taking thermal shock. It's, it's way better than like plain old crappy flint glass, which nobody wants to use in a lab. And you can see it turns orange as I get it hotter. And you'll eventually see the glass itself change color. And the glass will start to glow red. It's already getting soft because I can bend it a bit. Something kind of neat, what I'm doing here with uh, hanging a piece of glass rod vertically. This is tubing. When they, when they do it for a optical fiber, they do it with a, a solid piece of glass. But this is very similar to how they make glass fiber. Is, uh, they take a solid rod and they hang it vertically and they heat it very precisely and draw it out and it's done through tension. It's not like when they make regular wire. When they make regular wire, they pass wire through a series of successfully, or successively smaller dies, which is a fancy word for a piece of metal with a hole in it. And it works great with stuff like copper, but glass won't shrink that way, so they actually heat it, and they just draw it down with gravity and tension. Now you can see this is, it's really gummy. And when it's really hot, it has a consistency of honey, pretty much. So we're just going to heat this up. And I can't pull on it too hard because it'll slide through the mount on top. It's just a, a friction mount. It's a really uncomfortable angle. I'll just twist this a little. See, so you can bend that right around. Now you got to be careful when you do this because it's very easy to pull out. Like, watch here, I'll do it. You can pull out a little hair thin strand. See, I've got that little tiny piece of glass. And these are like needles. They're really sharp. 
and you get a sliver with that and it breaks off and now you got all kinds of problems. So I'm just going to set that aside over there and we'll slide down some more tube. And what's really neat is now we've taken it apart, it's totally possible to fuse it back together again and do neat stuff with it. Like I can take that and fuse it on there and draw it out. And you can actually weld two pieces of glass back together. I'll just stick that right on there. And if I let that cool, it'll go right back together. Let's try something a, a little bit larger scale. Because while that little burner works, it's not very good for this. And with a little bit more heat, And you can, quite effectively, tie glass into knots if you want. Ah, I broke it. That's okay. You can fix that. There. It's like nothing ever happened. No one will notice. It's totally cool.
Now I'm just going to heat this spot really, really hot and make a big wad right on the end. And we'll do something cool. You can't rush glass. I'm just going to set this right here. And we're just going to see what happens. I don't think I have enough weight there to get it to drip. So we'll add to our blob. We're just gonna add a big blob of molten glass here on the bottom. And the problem is when you get a big blob, it heats unevenly and it will crack and there's, there's nothing you can do about that. I hope I can get this to crack off. There we go. I'm just going to poke this in and try and wad it all up. You can do this with metal tools, like uh, I could use my Gerber to push this around, but two things happen. One, the Gerber gets really hot and uncomfortable to hold, and two, as the Gerber draws heat energy away from that, it creates cold spots and it'll crack. You really got to focus on even heating when you're playing with glass, because if you have cold spots, It'll, it'll mess up. So now I've got a whole bunch of weight there. I'm just going to hang the whole thing on it. You'll also notice, I don't know if the camera can see it, but this, is, this piece of glass here is all fogged up. And that's because as a byproduct of the fire, we're making water vapor. So you'll see the glass fog up, even though you're not like actually blowing in it. Now we've got enough weight there that that's starting to move under its own weight. You can see it moving along. What I was really hoping for was getting enough weight together where it would drip. But I don't think I have anywhere near enough weight or heat to do that. This torch needs to have a much higher output than what I'm able to get with it. I've got it maxed out right now. I think we can get it to drip in that much weight. There we go. Boop. So, there's our fun with fire for the day and playing with glass tubing. You guys have fun. That is off. That torch really sucks. You guys have fun? We'll have more for you next time. I'm melting my table.
That's today here at the Geek Group. If you want more information or you want to come down and learn about science and play with stuff and just see how things work, um, check us out at www.thegeekgroup.org and send us an email at info at thegeekgroup.org. And by all means, comment, subscribe, rate, do everything you want to do. Get involved. You guys have fun. We'll have more for you next time. See ya. I set the epoxy on fire and it stinks. With the piece that fell down, the big piece. I'm sitting here going, man, that smells bad. But I've got, I've got my artistic piece of glass. There it is. I made art. I made art. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know anything about glass blowing. It's just not my thing. But I know how to make glass blobs. So, you know. Do you we don't have anything that gets high enough to do. Yeah, we don't. And that, that's the hottest torch I have without going to like an oxy torch, and they don't video well. So, that's what we got. All right. That's the video right there. <laughs>